Okay, everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about 1 Samuel 28 and the infamous Witch of Endor scripture. This came to my attention I seen on Facebook last night. <clears throat> a post about this. I believe a brother was showing the truth of once saved, always saved. And posting the scripture, the infamous which have been nor scripture, which proves once saved, always saved as well. Now, we all know there are idiots out there that'll say that wasn't Samuel that the witch of Endor conjured up. That was a demon. Okay, even though they have no scriptural evidence of this whatsoever. And really, all the scriptural evidence says and shows is that it was Samuel. Because the Bible says it was Samuel. And a true prophecy always comes from a true prophet. Samuel even prophesied, You and thy sons will be with me. And they will be where he is, with him. Okay? But there's people that will still come back and say, Oh, well, this wasn't really Samuel. Well, then they are changing the Bible. Uh, I was appalled to see how many people... And then some people... One, one woman was on there playing semantics. She was saying, Well, Samuel said that... Saul would be where he was, and so technically, well, what, what she was getting at was she was still trying to say that Saul went to hell. He didn't go to the uh, paradise side, okay? Even though Samuel said, Saul, you will be with me, and your sons will be with me, she was trying to say that all that Samuel was saying. They will be in the same place. Okay, which it doesn't make sense. But they said, she was trying to say Samuel was saying that Saul will be in the hell part. Samuel didn't say that. He said he'll be with him. So she's interpreting Saul, Samuel saying Saul will be with me as Saul won't really be with him. He'll be in the hell part. See, that doesn't even make sense either. There's so many people that will not believe Scripture. It's crazy. They would fight tooth and nail not to believe one saved, always saved. I got the Scripture right here. You guys can read it while I'm talking. Okay. It's very simple. God allowed this to happen. Just like God opened the mouth of a donkey. Just, got, just like all the miracles that have happened. All right? You could use the same logic these idiots try to say. Oh, they can't conjure up a true prophet. Here's the deal. God allowed it to happen. And we know, how do we know it was really Samuel? Because the Bible says it was Samuel. The Bible does not say it was a familiar spirit. The Bible does not say it was demonic. Yes, it was the witch of Endor. But God is the one that allows things to happen, okay? Something like this. That allows a true prophet to prophesy what's going to happen. And then I had one guy, I seen one guy come on the Facebook post about this last night. See, because when this brother put the once saved, always saved uh, truth of the Witch of Endor story about Samuel prophesying where Saul was going to go, even though Saul did all those bad things, all the heretics come out to play. They all come out from every direction. They crawl out from under their, out of their little caves, and they come to fight you on this. And they all come with different interpretations, and they all come with their own belief. One guy was trying to say that uh, just because uh, their death was prophesied doesn't mean that they're going going to be in paradise. Um, Jezebel and Rahab was prophesied their death and they went to hell. And see, that's the retarded thing about that is nobody's saying if your death is prophesied, automatically that means that you're going to hell. That's not what the argument is. The argument is the Bible says it was Samuel and Samuel prophesied true. Okay? 
And then the, the lady I just told you guys about that was saying, uh, what Samuel meant by Saul going to be with him is he's going to be in the same area, but not necessarily with him. See, that's crazy. Who would, who would think that? And then there's all the infamous idiots that think it wasn't Samuel, even though the Bible says it was Samuel. So, I mean, who are you going to believe here? It, it becomes, it's hilarious how many, how many people fight what the Bible is saying. There's so many videos on YouTube saying that that wasn't really Samuel, even, the, even though the Bible says it was. It makes me sick. All they're doing is reinterpreting the Bible to say what they wanted to say. Because they can't handle the truth of once saved, always saved. Now, way back in the Old Testament, the Bible shows the truth of once saved, always saved. Even though Saul did something horrible, even though his life was pretty horrible at the end there, you're still saved by grace. You're not saved by how you live. And Samuel even prophesied where he's going to be. And the Bible says, I mean, just look at the scripture. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Okay? Saul could see that it was Samuel. Now, then you'll have the idiots argue, well, that's just Saul's perception. Oh, come on, people. Really? The Bible says, And Samuel said to Saul, Alright? When this scripture was written, by the unction of the Holy Spirit through holy men, okay, through through men that would that let the Holy Spirit inspire them to write this. He wrote down, and, and Samuel said to Saul, "Why hast thou?" Hold on, let me clear my throat. To bring me up, and Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. See, Saul was not hearing from God, so he's trying to go around God. Alright? And it ended up biting him in the rear end. Like every time anybody tries to go around God. Okay? But the scriptures here, guys. Uh... Even Samuel goes into detail because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel to the hand of the Philistines. A true prophecy from a true prophet, the Samuel, not a familiar spirit, not a demonic spirit. How do we know it's not a familiar spirit? How do we know it's not something demonic? Because it does not say that it is. It says that it's Samuel. So, any idiot that tries to tell you, oh, that's not really Samuel, they are entering that into the text. They are putting their own thought, their eisegesis into the text. That's what they're doing. Because the Bible doesn't say that. Alright? And any, any idiot tries to tell you, oh, well, he didn't really go to be with Samuel. He went to the, the hell part while Samuel was in the paradise part. See, the Bible doesn't say that either. What does it say? Samuel said that Saul and his sons will be with him. With him. Okay? Now, if I tell somebody that they're going to be with me tomorrow, am I really telling them they're going to be a mile apart from me or however long with a great gulf fixed in between? No. <laughs> I'm telling them they're going to be with me. Okay? So, that stupid idiotic interpretation is thrown down. Any person who tries to tell you, well, he didn't really mean with him. He meant in the same vicinity but in a different department. What are you talking about? With me means with me. Okay? If it's somewhere else that's not with the person, it's not actually with... Okay, see, it's stupid. People that... They fight to the nail not to believe once saved, always saved. Okay, that's the first time I've ever heard that interpretation. Well, he didn't really mean with him. He meant in the other department, in the same vicinity. That's stupid. Okay, anyways... Uh, Yeah, people that hate once they've always saved will always interpret this. 
the wrong way because they don't want to believe the truth. They're still trusting in themselves to get themselves to heaven. That's why they are so scared of going to hell 24-7 because they have no righteousness, okay? They don't have Christ. They are not the righteousness of God in Christ, okay? I'm not saying that people can't get mixed up, but you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. I was just appalled of how many people have so many different interpretations of this. And the main, but the main flaming heretics, I, I think that's, that word's funny, flaming heretic, <laughs> is ready to spontaneously combust at any second. They're, they're right there at the doors of hell, ready to blow up. Anyways, <laughs> these people, it was, it's crazy how they don't want to accept that Saul was saved, even though he did bad things. It's funny because people will, they put the standard of being saved right below them, okay? All the time people do that. Them and anybody above them is saved, but anybody right below their standard, they're going to hell, okay? That's what that's how people are. So when these people, they don't believe in one saved, always say they believe everybody's going to heaven That's that lives better than them or just as much as them good as them and anybody below them is going to hell. Okay, see, that's not right. It's nothing with your behavior. It's nothing at all with your behavior when it comes to salvation. One person wrote on one of my videos the other day, repent and bring forth fruits meat for repentance or burn in hell. And I was like, really? Really? These people are so deluded. And they don't understand. They're like missing with a bunch. They're like dealing with children. All the different interpretations. But there is one true interpretation of this. And it is that the Bible says it was Samuel. We know that. And we know the prophecy was true. Only a true prophecy can only come through from a true prophet. Okay? There's no scripture in here that says otherwise. There's no other, other evidence in here that says otherwise. So don't listen to anybody that tries to tell you that, oh, Saul went to hell because that wasn't really Samuel, or Saul went to a different side. You know, just don't listen to that because it's not in the scripture. God bless everybody, and everybody have a great day.